The zone of interest is not a story in the sense of a normal film. It's about a man who has a lovely life with his family. He's very good at his job. They live in the country in a lovely house with a lovely garden. He also happens to be the commandant of Auschwitz. Their garden wall was the same wall on the other side that was the death camp. In our early research, the photographs, the Hoss family album is in this garden. You see everything. You see pool and the slide and the greenhouse and the rest of it. You never see the wall that abuts the camp. There have been films about perpetrators, and a lot of those examples have shown perpetrators quite villainous, you know, um, not us. So I wanted to avoid the artifice of cinema. I wanted to look at them more forensically. He said, we don't want to make this like a movie set. There was no lighting, there was no film gear on the set, only like cameras. So they wired the whole house with the cameras. Some of them were hidden, some of them were visible, but no camera people were behind it. We were all in a trailer, over the wall, basically. How it affects the acting, you definitely knew you were all alone with the history, with all the things that were present in that house that I cannot even explain. It was really important, critical, in fact, for the entire project to be as close to the truth as one could possibly get, to create present tense as an experience and also allow the audience to be able to project themselves onto these people and see themselves. Very easy to see these people committing genocide and thinking, they're monsters, that's not me, I'm safe. But they didn't start as mass murderers. They started as boyfriend and girlfriend, having dreams about their future. What they wanted for themselves is not that dissimilar to what everybody wants. For them. And the whole idea of this project was to be confronted by a reflection of ourselves on some level. Yeah.